So I'm going to start with a quick rundown of the plants that I got just to give you the sense of what I have. Then I'm going to repot them and tell you a little bit about why I specifically chose native plants and my intentions, my plans, story behind that. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the surprise and give you the sappy story. <laughs> So starting with this one, this is a Douglas Iris, Iris Douglasiana. Uh, if you remember my balcony tour, you'll remember that I already have plants that are irises, they're Fortnite lilies. I wanted more of that growing habit and I wanted more of that type of flower. Enter the Douglas Iris. It has this sort of clumping rhizomatous growing habit. It's got these sticky uppy jazz hands leaves. Are those fucking mealybugs? I'm going to scream. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. What is that? What are these things? I've had you for two weeks. I quarantined you. And I'm so glad I did because... Anyway, funny story. Haha. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I got native plants was that I wanted animals to come and potentially pick off these pests. However, <laughs> there's a complication with that plan now because... Look here, what I noticed was there's a little bit of damage on these leaves. See this yellow spotting? And now look on the back of the leaves. What are these white spots? What are these white spots? That's a bug that doesn't belong there. So I'm pretty unhappy about this, but the good news is I did not stick it with my other plants. I will unfortunately need to bring out the more traditional ways of dealing with pests. I don't know if this is a pest. Um, they don't move when I brush on them with my fingers. They kind of just are stuck on and I'm kind of hoping it's just like paint or something. I don't know, but what a disappointment. My, my brand new plant. So I've learned quite a bit about my new problem since I finished filming. Uh, stick around to the end where I start treating the plant and I'll tell you more. Now I've done a quick look at this and I'm not seeing any sign of leaf damage. Good. This is a bush monkey flower. This plant will flower with little orange flowers. I am noticing that it has a woody stem. When I see that, I hope, oh, the plant will get very tall and very big and spread very wide. Another thing I like about this plant is that the leaves have this very long pointy shape, which I don't know about you, but I think is a little reminiscent of, well, adult lettuce, which is funny to me because I am 12 years old. I'm not actually 12 years old. Don't, don't do that. Don't take that to people. I'm an adult, I promise. Uh, my humor is out of a 12 year old. The cultivar is a hybrid. I can't remember the scientific name because all that's sticking in my head is monkey flower jelly bean because it's a hybrid cultivar that's called jelly bean. It is supposed to do okay in containers and is supposed to do okay in the shade. We'll see how that pans out. So I had to get down on the ground for this one because I can't actually carry this plant for a long period of time. This is a pink flowering currant. Um, it's pretty large already. It's in what I am assuming is a four to five gallon pot. It's got these leaves that look a little bit like maple leaves, which I think is just delightful. Happily, unlike the other two plants I just showed you, this one's already got flowers on it, so I can give you a nice good look at what the flowers look like. They are little and pink. You did hear me say that this was called a pink flowering currant. Yes, this plant does produce fruit. And there are two reasons I'm excited about that. One, yummy fruit. <laughs> Two, that means there are seeds in the fruit, and that means that this plant just might be self-seeding. Voice over time, microphone bad. I'm gonna start with the bush monkey flower here and save the Douglas iris for last because I don't know what its deal is and I don't wanna be sanitizing and washing my hands all between my plants all day long. Because native plants are more adaptive to being in the ground, I'm going with grow bags here for extra breathability and drainage. You might think this is a colossal growing container for a plant this size, and you might be right. I'm hoping the breathability and the orchid bark will mitigate any potential this pot is too big problems. I also don't want to be repotting the native plants too much because all plants like to stay put, but especially these. Check out that thick root ball. Absolutely wild. <clears throat> anyway, fortunately, this cultivar of bush monkey flower, the jelly bean one, 
is more suited than others for container life, so I'm hoping that will be to my advantage. I noticed while trying to loosen the root ball here that this soil is not peat based, but it's coir based. I'm not sure if the nursery made this choice of soil because there were some environmental concerns about peat and the sourcing and harvesting of peat, or if they were just choosing to use this because they wanted to control all of the nutrients that went into the plant. I decided to leave most of the coco coir on instead of trying to get it all off because I would have done more damage to the roots if I had done that than if I had just left alone as is like this. They did use a synthetic fertilizer. It looks like Osmocote, which I'm not against that, but it's just not something I want for myself. I'll also be holding off on that happy frog fruit and flower you see back there and putting in this old isopod frass instead just for a low stakes kickstart. I don't want to add too much fertilizer because I don't know how old the Osmocote is and I don't want to burn the roots. Normally I wouldn't be repotting a plant in weather that is this cold, but the monkey flower was so compacted and I don't want any of the plants to be root bound during the winter, especially if there might be a pest thing going on with the Douglas iris. They do need to be at their capacity to be able to fight that off. On the plus side, because they're native to the area, I don't have to worry about overwintering or insulation or anything like that because they're used to this climate. Native plants are more likely than introduced ones to attract local pollinators because those animals recognize the nectar of those plants as food. Here is my bigger grow bag for the pink flowering currant right now. It's got handles, lucky me, and I'll be using Fox Farms Ocean Forest instead of Happy Frog here for no particular reason except that the garden center was out of Happy Frog. I thought that the pink flowering currant was going to be just as compacted as the bush monkey flower, but to my surprise, all of it just kind of fell out. Still though, I decided to keep repotting because I was kind of already halfway through and the grow bag with the breathability was going to be helpful anyway. I gathered up and reused the potting mix that was in the old pot just to hopefully reduce some of the transplant shock and this time I remembered perlite. Attracting local pollinators which supports the local wildlife is a good thing to do but I have another more selfish reason for doing this. Every year I get some kind of pest infestation and every year I usually use some kind of pesticide or insecticide like SNS203 to control it. Last year I purchased ladybugs online to control some aphids and it worked flawlessly. The aphids were gone and have not been back. Unfortunately, I later learned that this was still problematic because I may have been releasing invasive bugs into my garden because even though they're captive bred, I don't know where they're bred. The other side of that though is that using insecticides, natural or synthetic, is kind of counterintuitive if I have a garden full of flowers that pollinators will come and visit and get a dose of the insecticides and die. I can't support local pollinators and use insecticides. My hope is that by attracting local pollinators, I can attract other wildlife that will eat any pests for me off of the native plants and my other plants so I don't have to use these insecticides anymore. I've only got half a bag left. Look how much I used. So that was a seven gallon bag. I'm really glad I went and got more potting soil. And to finish up the tidying, a little bit of sweeping of the balcony. Okay, now that I've cleaned up, it's time for the surprise in the sappy story. So first, I have this beautiful purple flowering plant. Now, I am a sucker. I am a sucker at the hardware store. And I saw this little label that said, oh, it wasn't on this plant, but I was gonna I was gonna say I saw this little label that said pollinators for perennials, perennials for pollinators. And I was like, and I was like, I have an unreliable microphone. My microphone died. Anyway, I was like, well, I like perennials, I like pollinators. So this is a purple stream, TM. This plant is not native, but it is good in part shade according to the label and will grow to be six to eight inches tall kind of on the small side for a plant, which is for me in my small space, pretty good. See, I'm reading the label now, pretending that my mic is on, check it out. And 
one reason I was attracted to this, in addition to the pollinator thing, is that these cute, deep purple flowers have this really delicious honey scent, which is just so yummy. I also like that the leaves kind of have this curling thing going on in their elliptical shape. Moving on to the next. The mic kept dying, so here comes some crappy audio quality. Here's a surprise. So this plant is called Cyclamen. I saw this plant at a lavender store and I'd never seen it before. And I restrained myself. I said, I shouldn't buy the plant on impulse. I don't know what it needs. I should probably wait. So I waited and I did some research and it turns out this plant is a perennial and it is from Iran, which is in the Middle East. And that's what kind of started getting me to really love this plant. You know, being from the Middle East myself, although not from Iran, I don't see a lot of plants in the hobby that, you know, are in cultivation in the States that are from the Middle East. So even though I'm not from Iran, I'm from the Middle East. And it made me feel a little more connected to home knowing I could have a plant that is grown at least within a hundred 500 mile vicinity of, you know, where my heritage is, where my family's from. So onto the plant, uh, it has these pink flowers that are sort of tubular in shape. The petals are vertical almost. So you'll notice here, this plant, this is a bud for the flower, right? And, you know, my first thought was that when it's gonna flower, this will become upright and it'll pop open, but that's actually not the case. Look, I'll show you. Here's the tubular nature, and if I can just get you to see in there, the bud is actually still pointing down, which I think is so neat. The petals are vertical. It's almost like a little bucket, a little hanging bucket. And I don't know if this is a plant that's gonna attract a pollinator. Look, this is where it comes out. That's where all the little goodies are, where all the pollen and stuff is gonna be in the bottom, kind of like a bell. And the flower has kind of a, a, not peppery necessarily. It's a little peppery, but it's also sweet. Not a honey sweet like the, like the purple stream. The leaves are round and fairly large, you know, half the size of the palm of my hand. There's a little bit of variegation, not only in the venation here, but also on the spots that you can see on the surface of the leaf and the spots kind of go all the way around near the edge like this. The stems of the leaves are red, kind of like the Peperomia caprata rosso, which I also really like. And look how big it is already. So I'm hoping that it gets even bigger and enjoys being outside on my back. I do know that eventually I'll need to repot it because I'm able to see the roots popping out of the bottom but I'm gonna give it a couple weeks to settle in before I do that and also make sure that there is no weird bug thing happening. Here, look, it's gonna flower more. I am honestly amazed that it flowers in the winter. I think it just had more sun at the hardware store, but we'll see how it fares on my balcony. Hopefully it keeps flowering, hopefully it's happy. I'm confident it'll be okay outside because it was growing outside of the hardware store. So that's Cyclamen. I'm so stoked. I've wanted this plant for at least a month. And I just happened to see it at the hardware store. I didn't even seek it out. So that's it for the balcony update. I am going to off screen, go take care of the Douglas irises, see if I can just wipe them clean with an alcohol swab, and uh, update you on how that goes. Hi. Did I say off screen? I lied. So here I am with a few alcohol swabs just wiping down the leaves, hopefully. I was sitting there hoping and praying that, oh, it's just dirt. Oh, it's just dirt. Folks, it's not dirt. Those are, in fact, mealybugs. 
the good news is that uh, other people do treat mealybugs initially with wiping with alcohol swabs like this. The idea is just to get the adult mealybugs off. Unfortunately, in my frantic scratching them off trying to see what they were, I may have spread them on the balcony a little bit, so I'm keeping a close eye on the other plants for sure. The thing I need to do is keep swabbing them like this, and I also may need to whip out the SNS-203. Unfortunately, I'm hoping it'll be okay because this plant is not flowering yet and I do plan to repot it once it is all better from the mealybugs. But the reason the bugs didn't move and let me scratch them off is that mealybugs don't move. They anchor into the leaf and suck it dry to death. Uh, Scale does this as well, and through this activity, I learned that my Syngonium Mango Illusion, or Maria Illusion, I don't remember, uh, had scale. And it was living with scale, and I didn't know, so I had to make the unfortunate decision to throw it away, because I can only manage one bug infestation at a time, and I was planning to rehome that particular Syngonium anyway. Really sad but it is just kind of a wake up call that maybe I have too many plants inside and you know, I, I, I might need to sort that out. Now I'm gonna say bye for real because I really gotta focus on getting this Douglas Iris pest free. See you later.